think about how you can tell whether or not a number is prime. If you're going to think about factorizing numbers into primes, we better first of all know which are the prime numbers. So if I say to you, what if I say to you, okay, is the number 39 prime? Well, the obvious way of checking to see if 39 is prime is to see if it has any non-trivial factors. Is 39 prime? So we can just go through and test. Well, 39 isn't divisible by 2. Is 39 divisible by 3? Ah, oh, yes, 39 is divisible by 3. Uh, so the answer is no, because 39 is 3 times 13. So it doesn't, it is divisible by numbers other than 1 and itself, so it's not prime. So let's try, um, let's try 41. Well, let's try that. Is it divisible by 2? No. Is it divisible by 3? No. Remember, we can add up the digits to see whether it's divisible by 3. 4 add 1 is 5, and that's, that's this, this little trick that says you add up the digits and you see if that's divisible by 3 or not. And it isn't, so that's not divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 4. It's not divisible by 5. It's not divisible by 6. It's not divisible by 7. It's not divisible by 8. How far do we have to keep going? There's a question. Can we stop yet? I mean, we clearly, we don't have to check all the way up to 40, right? It might look like we have to check all the numbers smaller than 41 to see if it has a factor. But we don't have to get all the way to 40, because after a certain point, the, the numbers are clearly too big, right? Obviously, once we get up to 20, we don't have to go any further, because that would be too big. But actually, we can stop much earlier than that. We can stop at, well, we can stop once we've got to 6. Basically, we can stop once we've got to the square root of 41. Because if we, once we've got to something bigger than the square root, we've already checked for it. Because if we're bigger than the square root of 41, which is somewhere between 6 and 7, right? Because 6 squared is 36, which is less than 41. 7 squared is 49, which is bigger than 41. So the square root of 41 is somewhere between 6 and 7. Now, if 41 was going to have be divisible by anything, supposing 41 equals a times b, then if one of these, if, if a is bigger than the square root of 41, then b is going to have to be smaller than it. So one of those factors is going to have to be smaller than the square root of 41. So I hope you can see that when we're checking for factors, we can stop once we've got to the square root. So we've now checked up to the square root, because we've checked up to 6 already. So we can say, yes, it is prime, because none of the numbers from 1 to 6 divide it. So let's try another number. Let's try uh, 53. Well, you should try this one, maybe. What's the square root of 53? So we can see where we have to go up to. Well, 7 squared is 49, and 8 squared is 64. So the square root of 53 is somewhere between 7 and 8. So we only have to check up to 7. Well, it's not divisible by 2. Is it divisible by 3? 5 out of 3 is 8. If we add up the digits and we get 8, that shows that well, 8 is not divisible by 3, so that means 53 isn't divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 4? Well, no, it's not, because um, 52 is divisible by 4, so 53 can't be. Is it divisible by 5? No. Is it divisible by 6? No, it can't, because 54 is divisible by 6. Is it divisible by 7? No, it can't, because 54 is divisible by 7, so 53 can't be, so the answer is yes. Now, I hope you can see that this is a bit of a boring way of finding out if a number is prime or not. And in general, if, you, if I gave you a really, really, really big number, it would take an awfully long time to check all of those divisions. One, one quite neat way of finding primes is to do it slightly backwards. Instead of starting with a number and testing to see if it's prime, we can just start by producing a list of prime numbers by this following rather fun method, which is called the sieve, because it's sort of like a sieve. Um, 
you know how a sieve, it's got holes in it, and you chuck all your stuff into the sieve, and then you start shaking it, and then everything that's smaller than the hole drops through, and everything that's bigger than the hole stays there. And if you, if you kept using different sizes of holes, different things would fall through. So that's what we're going to do. And it's called the sieve of Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes was some Greek dude who figured this out a long time ago, like, I don't know, around zero probably, or two or three. Um, that is the year two or three. I'm not quite sure when it was, but those Greek guys, it was all a very long time ago. Right? The sieve of error toss the knees. I think I spelled him right. So what you do is you start by, let's find all the prime numbers up to 100. You might think that finding all the prime numbers up to 100 is going to take a really long time. But actually, the only thing that's going to take me a long time is writing down all the numbers up to 100 in the first place. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I do encourage you to do this while I'm doing it, because then you can do your own sieve. 3, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I should really have pressed pause while I was doing this, shouldn't I? 31, it's not very interesting. And you know what? It's not going to fit. I'm going to press pause, write it up in a way that fits, and then come back. And you can do that on your page as well. OK, I've got my big grid. I suppose I should say, here's one I prepared earlier. I've got my big grid of all the numbers from 1 up to 100 now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start sieving First of all, I know that 1 isn't prime, so I should never have put that, that up and crossed that one out. I'm now going to use a sieve that, that gets rid of all the numbers divisible by 2. So any number that's divisible by 2 is definitely not prime, so I can just cross it out right now. So I'll do this in blue. So this whole column goes, I mean, I could go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so it would be quicker for me to take out this whole column, and I can take out this whole column. You can do this at home as well. Take out this whole column. Take out this whole column. And take out this whole column. You can see that this video is going to run out of time. OK, so now the next number that I need to try is 3. So now I'm going to go and use a different sieve. I'm going to use the sieve that gets rid of all the numbers divisible by 3. So now I can just go through and cross out all the numbers divisible by 3. Some of them will already have gone, of course, so I get to cross out 3. 6 is already gone. 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51, 54. Now, of course, these happen in nice diagonal patterns. I hope you enjoy these kinds of patterns that appear when you start doing things with numbers. So I can just take out everything in these diagonals, right? Stop me if I do something wrong. Uh, this one, this one, and this one. And so then the next diagonal is going to be 3 down at 60. So I can take out that whole diagonal and that whole diagonal. Yeah, that's quite satisfying, isn't it? I hope that comes up nicely. Right. So. Um, I've just realized that I was supposed to circle, I was supposed to circle the number that I was testing for divisibility by. So this number didn't get crossed out before I arrived at it. So this one is prime, and this number didn't get crossed out before I arrived at it. So this one is prime, okay? So the next number that hasn't got crossed out before I arrived at it is five. So this one is prime. Let me find, see how many colors I can go through. So I circle this one to show it's prime, and now I can go around crossing out everything that's divisible by 5. And this is easy because this is going to come in this column, 5, that's all these ones. And of course everything in the 10 column has already been crossed out because it's all divisible by 2, but for the sake of colourfulness, I'll go and cross those out as well. So it's time to end this particular video, but while this one is ending and the next one is beginning, you see if you can carry on. So the next one we're going to do is 7.